Ready. Okay. And we are ready and we are live. So hello and welcome to another episode of Loose Cannon. Sorry for the delayed start. We were ha- we we're trying to diagnose some um, audio things. Last week's episode, you might have noticed it. Um, hopefully, maybe hopefully it wasn't bad, but it sounded on at least our end uh, kind of like a dip in in uh, sound. And we just we're not entirely sure how to fix it. We think we might have fixed it, but we'll we'll see. Um. So this week we're going to be talking about season of the plunder, a very exciting season so far. I think um, it's a lot of fun things to do, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that we didn't get to go too deep into uh, from last week's episode. Right. So uh, how have you been, man? Great. Um, I got stung by a wasp a couple of days ago, so I'm dealing with that. Jeez, that sucks. Yeah, it did suck. Totally hitchhiked on my shirt, and then I sat down and like, you know, scrunched it up so it bit me right on the belly, or it stung me right on the belly. Oh my god! <laughs> and then I freaked out because I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a splinter, and so I went to go pull it out, and it was a wasp, and so it got me on the hand. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> so that was interesting, and so now it just itches really bad. That. That's that's kind of crazy to hear. I got stung by a wasp when I was a kid at uh no. I was I was in Florida at a mini golf place and it was like 97 98 degrees out and they had like a wasp nest in not like they put one in but there was a wasp nest and it was it was so hot that they were just going crazy. They didn't they didn't care who you were. They just they just wanted to fight. Nice. And, yeah. Yeah, I've been stung by wasps before, but this one is just, it's in the sucky spot. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right on the stomach. I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine many, many worse places than that. Yeah, it's, it's it starts off really say, small. <laughs> yeah, it starts off really small, and then the next morning you wake up, it looks like you're like being taken over by a parasite. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'd be freaking out if I were you. That's, that's awful. It's fine, it's gone away. Just right. itches. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're what is this? This is a uh, week four of season of the plunder. So we're one month in. Yeah, what is normally a three month season. It went by so fast. We've seen um, a full rotation of the catch crash bosses, and the I first two. Idea. Yeah, the first two were pretty pretty interesting. The third one, I'm not a fan of. <laughs> that guy sucks. <laughs> Just from a game mechanic, or from... yeah, from a game mechanic, because okay. so so just a refresher. This week and the first week, it's um, uh, is it scurvy? Yeah, <laughs> the shank, the big, the big heavy shank, and yeah. so their mechanic is they spawn or they get spawned um mini servitors that like hover around them, and it's like okay, you destroy the servitors and you break their shield and then you fight them again. And it's like, okay, cool. That's a very simple, very basic mechanic that anyone coming in can understand. And then the second one, what what did the second one do? I don't even really remember them. Second week's uh, boss. And I forgot. Didn't he do the... um, uh, uh, No, that that was the one that you fought. It was kind of similar to Tannix. That was the first one where you went in the room and you had like the Scorch Cannon y thing. No, I don't remember. What was the second one? I don't remember what the second one was. Um, oh, crud. Well, you think we're not in to charge of... No, that was the first one. I'm thinking of the first one. Where you like end up in the room and you know, shooting you. It's similar to that. It's what it reminded me of. I immediately got a feel of... Uh, Fighting, I was like fighting Tannix. I mean, you might be thinking of the second one by the sound. Well, maybe I am thinking of the second one. I just, I, I'm drawing such a blank on it. It's, it's embarrassing. I remember not thinking the second one was terrible, but then the third one, and this is, this is just really where it is. It's, it's such a leap from the first to the third week boss, which was last week's boss. You walk out onto the top deck, and they have trip mines set up so that yeah. you can walk into them and if you don't know you immediately die because there's so many of them and then he's standing up like 
not on the crow's nest because it's not super high up, but he's up on that platform and he has an energy shield and he has inherent match game on his shield. So if it starts as a solar shield, you better have a solar weapon. If it doesn't, you better have whatever weapon it is matching. And then before you can even damage him, like you spend all this effort just to break his shield. And then before you can even damage him, he teleports to one side of the ship. His shield is already fully back. You have to do it again. And then you get this like window to attack and he he gets immunity shielded. He summons uh, mines that are going to detonate. And then also at each mine, there is a catch with a brig on it just to make it extra bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a level so far above the other two. It's, it's kind of jarring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny though. I like, I like how they approached it. I mean, it's definitely fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It, yeah. it has the replayability that, um, the, it called the uh gosh i don't even remember what anything's called anymore now well about. like the the catch crash event yeah in yeah itself i think it's it's a very good event it's like very high action like it it's it's almost like a menagerie light or i guess um no it's more like a menagerie light than i was gonna say like the um dares of eternity because you have your your intro your intro is always the same but then you go in and then you do two of three activities. And do you do this one or do you do this one? And then which of the other two do you do? And then you have your final boss, which rotates on a weekly schedule. Um, it's I think it's a great activity. And that paired with expeditions, which there are three expeditions, Nessus, uh, Old Russia, and Europa, which those are kind of the same of like, defend the payload, escort the payload, defend the payload. Um, but I mean, still those, I think those are, you know, good missions and, and the loot structure through them, I think works really well. Yeah. But it just, what I'm, you know, people are, people are always going to be upset or depressed when they don't get the right loot or. Another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like with the captain's Atlas and the currencies to, to power the captain's Atlas and, and yeah. the different forms of it that you unlock, like right now, I think, I have the glimmer and the armor atlases unlocked and I'm about to get the weapons. Um, I haven't actually done, I haven't bought anything this week. I've only done the, uh, the activities just to like catch up and everything. Um, and I think this week I can buy the weapon upgrade. So then I can actually farm weapons through my captain's atlas. And I mean, I'm not playing over and over and over and over and over. But just from what amount, like casually playing, I'm never running out of map fragments or um, the other thing. What I am running out of is is um, energy, umbral energy. But this season is not the season to use umbral energy on armor, from what I've seen and heard. Yeah, I'm hearing the same stuff. Yes. Uh, and this was like a um, an eye opener for me. It's just something that I had like a complete blind spot on. I never really focused umbral energy and grams for armor, and it was such a a waste. And I I could have, I should have, and I didn't. And so basically, I had no good stat armor. It was all like low fifties stat armor with like spikes in all the wrong places, if there were any spikes to begin with. <laughs> And yeah. it's like, then I saw a video and it was just like, yeah, you put this mod on your ghost and then you go here and you buy an armor piece and then you get a probably pretty good armor piece. And I, it was, it was so fast to get like such an improvement in my, in my gear. And, and this, um, it's like immediately and you're like, yeah, the, oh, why am I doing this the whole time? Yeah, and then this season, you know, with the star chart, it's like, okay, well, I, I, I had leftover risen energy, and I had leftover haunted energy, so I did those, and now I have all this plunder energy, and I did the same thing, and thinking I'm going to see the same results, and it was just not as good. The armor was just like, no, we're not <laughs> going to give you those spikes. So go do it, you know, go do the past season's um, farms for uh, for good armor if you haven't already. I know it's such a dumb thing, but I, I wish there was a way to 
when you pick up an armor that was, you know, like whatever the name of the armor is. Because, I mean, you can also only change it to look like whatever you want, obviously. But, like, I just wish that when you infused whatever gear that you picked up was better, it would apply all the stats from it, too. <laughs> or, like, mm-hmm. you could pick to apply all the stats from it, too. Because, like, I sometimes just for, like, because I don't know if anybody else out there is particular like me, but my selective ADHD sometimes uh, prevents me from doing things outside of certain boxes. So, like, if I see I have a matching set of armor with all the same name, um, and then I find a piece of armor, like a piece of uh, like a chess piece that's better, mm-hmm. just be like, nah. <laughs> Even though it's better, I just won't use it because it breaks up my set and it's going to take way too long to do. Something. Especially now with, um, cause we're getting to this point where that's actually going to become more and more of an issue, I think, because Bungie yeah. started to implement and it's very minor, but set bonuses for armor. And so like, I think iron banner has it. And then each seasonal yeah. activity has it where it's like wearing up to four pieces of armor. So they're, they're not even saying don't wear an exotic. They're saying absolutely wear your exotic, yeah. um, get additional whatever whatever it might be and it's like that's nice except you're telling me to take off my good armor to wear this potentially bad or just less good armor and then it's like but you can still look the same you can still wear your ornaments over it and it's like yeah but i i want the ornaments and the stats and <laughs> so so the one thing that's been like historic historically done throughout the the destiny franchise is from day one when iron banner first came in you would go and run iron banner so if you were somebody who was a casual like me and didn't do a lot of raids and you weren't a viable uh person to carry through a raid or you didn't have gal whatever right so Mm -hmm. iron banner came around you could play what you like to play which was pvp if you're a pvp guy or you could just run into iron banner and just die over and over and over until you got enough armor that had good uh high enough light or now high enough stats and you know build quality that you can take become a viable person in other activities that are higher in and so that being said iron banner has always been an avenue for people to just jump in on and get some high level loot equip it and play and then uh take it out elsewhere outside the game so like i remember back in d1 I would show up in the raids in my full-blown Iron Banner gear because <laughs> that's what I played mostly was, you know, PvP because that's all I had time for to jump in on. That or just, you know, bounties and missions, replaying old stuff. But so, like, when I did go in the raids, I wasn't the guy that had all the raid stuff when it, when the raid had just come out. I was the guy that was, you know, running around with Iron Banner gear on. And <laughs> man, how did that work? Now, now I don't even remember how D1's like power leveling so, worked because I remember D- that I, I did that too. Simpler time, but you know, you had higher uh levels and there was an infusion back then, remember? Yeah, yeah. there was no infusion because yeah. I'm thinking about so you it. You had right? so you had your gear that you used and then you could you could um make your gear higher light, but you would just equip whatever was the highest so that you could like go into the raid. Cause they didn't have mods. They didn't have all these other abilities that the, the gear had. They just had like certain stat roles. Yeah. So if you had high enough intellect, discipline, whatever strength, uh, you were like, Oh, that's a good one. Cause now I can like run really fast. Cause I got all maxed out mobility or whatever yeah. it was. Or walk really fast. <laughs> yeah. walk. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, you would you kind of just roll with that, and so then once you went through the raid a couple of times, you finally got some raid pieces that you could wear. Show, up. yeah, because that was back when that was back when um, light levels were more harsh. So like we live in the yes. hundred system, and back then we lived in the ten system. So basically, <laughs> we started out with a cap of light power. I think it was called power level as well. Power level thirty. And people would be forever 29 because they couldn't get that one piece of armor and they couldn't get that one piece of armor to kick them up to 30 and that you could do the raid. Yeah. And that's, that was, and that's the other thing you get it from the raid and you need it to do the raid. And it's like this catch 22 spiral and people, Yeah, you literally could not do, you literally could not do the raid unless you were a high 
high enough power level. Like you couldn't even go in. Yeah. Or all. if you had, if you had the friends who would, who would bring you in, because it's like, we're talking like year one vault of glass. Like, right. I think the entry was power level 26, which you could get to, but yeah. people would look at you and be like, we're not bringing you in. You're 26. You got to be exactly. at least so, so what people would do. So people, what people would do is, um, yeah. They would like have all their friends just save the checkpoints for like that one chest you could just run and grab quick in hopes I that you would get that. something. Yeah. And so you'd be like, all right, come on in and bring all your friends in, just rotate because mm -hmm. they'd all be hungry for that same thing. There was that and then the loot cave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the loot cave wasn't actually efficient. Yeah, it was not. The power grind. Um, but yeah. so then Iron Banner came and it effectively was like, hey, you're not going to be Forever 29 anymore this is going to give you power level stuff as well. And everyone was like, that's so stupid. You should have to play the raid to get your, to get yeah. power level 30. And it's like, well, I can't play the raid in the first place because you're not bringing, you're not letting me in because I'm only level 26 and you're putting the, the line at level 27, but to get yeah. from 26 to 28, you need to do the raid. And it's, just, it was LFG assholes. Just like gatekeeping. That's, that's the mentality. Actions. That's the mentality that spoils the game just throughout any franchise. Yeah. Or any and at every, any game that, with like, yeah, multiplayer, anything. So, so the problem with that is, um, you know, it, I had to struggle. So you have to struggle. It's just the yeah. mentality that just infects everything. And people should just stop doing that because that's what's ruining the fun. Uh, because if you would just, you know, I remember in D1 people, for the most part, it seemed like the community was much more uh, willing to help people because I don't think they gave you a lot of information back then. And until the Queen's uh, bounties came out, people were all just stuck. And mm -hmm. so through that commiseration, <laughs> people were forced to kind of team up and be like, yo, what do we do? How do we get through this? Who is there? You know, just stuff like that. And uh, now we have an abundance of of stuff and a lot of it's very complicated but for the most part i think there's a pretty good avenue to get to where you need to be just if you play for the most part if you just play anything uh, oh yeah it's, it's it, in destiny 2 right now it's much more friendly yeah. to level up to get into the activities like there it's so much better even though I'm one of the people who's like against the light level grind, I'm exhausted grinding light level every season. Like you've proven that the game works amazingly without light level matter, like in, in the legendary campaign in contest yep. modes. And then you have things like, like uh, grandmaster nightfalls now where it's like, not only does your light level not matter because we're going to knock you down when you come in, but it also yeah. does matter because we're not going to let you in unless you get pinnacle plus 15 levels on your artifact. And it's just like, I'm never going to reach that. Like, so I, I did, I did grandmasters. I almost got, I think I, I'm like halfway to conquer because of the first season grandmasters came out. I was playing enough to get there and then I just didn't finish it. So now I'm sitting halfway to conquer because I'm never hitting pinnacle plus 15 on my my artifact so i but yeah it's it's much better now like looking back it sounds <laughs> it sounds awful it was all right it's much better now there's just still improvements to be made <clears throat> it's just crazy to think about how how back then you were basically locked in not just on the way that you looked, but like the armor that you had, there was, you couldn't even take the high level armor and put it into something else. You had no. to, you had yeah, to you wear had to use... this one set of armor or two sets of armor. It was either vault of glass armor or iron banner armor. Yeah. And then eventually it became, uh, Crota's end armor or yeah. iron banner yeah. armor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And then yeah. you didn't even get to pick shaders per piece. It was nope. one shader, nope. your whole you armor the, set. Yeah, you got the shader, and then oh, and if man. you didn't have a good shader, it was just, oh, well, roll with it. That is so funny to think about. I haven't thought about that in so long. You know, nostalgic. Can oh, be my God. Uh, people, you know, uh, there's all the sayings. Hindsight 2020, rose-tinted glasses. Yeah. Yada, yada. 
yada. Nostalgia can be a disease. Never look back. Yada yada yada. So, like, it's 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 a thing that can um, it can negative it can negatively impact your future enjoyment. Yeah. So if, if, if you don't want to dwell on it, is what I'm saying. But I at mean, the same time, at the same time, you gotta know where the steps were that got you where. You- yeah. It's that that makes me it makes me so happy to think about that stuff though because it's just like it's so funny it's it's almost like like doing like one of those like food challenges where it's like you just like gorged yourself on way too much food and you're just in pain <laughs> and it's just like man that sucked but I fucking loved it like I had such a yeah. good time yeah and it's just like that's 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 kind of yeah. how it feels to look back at how things used to be when they were like more unfriendly and it's like I never want to go back I'm never doing that again yeah but but man that was but, man that yeah, was a like, good time I don't know how many people I just met from having to, from being forced to have to run in a circle on Mars and do the little uh, farming for Osmium <laughs> materials, <Cadmus>. yeah, <laughs> yeah, for the swords. Oh man, yeah, never want to do that again. That was a good time. Uh, I never want to do that again. <laughs> never again. But I spent hours just running around in circles. Oh <sighs> my gosh. Yeah, I Anyways. got this done quick. I was very lucky on that. I remember. I remember there were people, and then what was the um. The knights in the Cosmodrome during uh, the Dark Below. Man, this is not about Season of Plunder yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The knights Sorry. in the Cosmodrome uh, in the Dark Below, they would drop Husk of the Pit. I got two Husk of the Pit drops. I got <laughs> one, and it was a white weapon. I didn't know what the fuck it was, so I deleted it. I was like, what is this? Oh, no. Get rid of this. That was it. And then someone told me what I had, and I was like, I had the the thing that people were complaining about. I did not realize, and then I immediately got a second one. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got it again. That's awesome. There, there is there is some charm that doesn't exist in Destiny now. In in that, like, it sucks. You know, you need there's this like weird balance of how do you make a game suck. But it's fun just that it enough. sucks. Yeah, just enough so that people are just a little miserable having yeah. to do a certain thing that they become a community out of it. Yeah. And that's, 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 community that's, of suffering people. <laughs> <laughs> we were bonded together in our suffering. Yeah. That's 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 what that's what Bungie did. That's that's why we're still here today. Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> We, yeah. we all we all went through this trauma and now we're just kind of still dealing with it but we're dealing with it together there you go, there you go. um okay so how about we get on to the lore card this week because i know this is a topic yeah, okay. that you're very uh excited to talk about yeah so i re i resurrected from the grave an old uh lore card but it's funny because this one comes up like repeatedly throughout many items within Destiny. You just have to be looking or, or you just have to open your eyes a little bit. Whether it be subtle or just blatant like this one is. Um, this theme, this, I don't know what you want to call it, trope, whatever, comes up just over and over and over again. And I thought it was funny because of all the disdain for divinity right now because there's so much like i don't know just a lot of banter around divinity for some reason i wonder why uh, well i mean <laughs> so i don't want to get too too hard into that but nah. I, mean, I i i don't disagree with the statement that having a necessary weapon is lame to be like oh who who has it we need to have it you know i it's got a lot. It does a lot, and it's never a bad thing to use. It's never, it's never the wrong thing to have, you know. And I, I think, I think I wish I just the one thing I wish people would do is if nobody had it, they would just be like, okay, that's okay, let's do something else. But if somebody I mean. did have it, and they'd be like, well, do you want to use? It? Okay, well then let's use, let this let that person use it. So just if it's there. Let the person use it if they want to or not. If it's not there, go on to something else. Well, so or, it, it, m- m- what I'm what I'm trying to say, and I think this is like that delicate line that that people are yeah. missing, is that it's like there's 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 no reason not 
to use it and to say, well, then this just don't use it. And it's like, why would I do that to myself? Why would I not use it? And I'm not saying like remove it. I'm not saying like nerf it absolutely into the ground. It's just like, I don't know how it needs to be balanced. And, and it doesn't matter what we say or what we think. Bungie's already on this, you know? Right. Yeah. They've already got there. Yeah. Nothing that was said. Sorry, go on. No, I'm sorry. They're already, they're already miles ahead of us on it. They're just not talking. Nothing, nothing that was said in the past couple weeks made Bungie go, wait a second. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone's, everyone's using divinity. No, they were, they were well aware and they know it's a delicate thing to adjust. And that's why no, like, immediate adjustment has come out it's just when something will literally give you more damage as a special weapon and will make it so things like rockets do critical damage as well like it's 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 kind of crazy where it's like take it in into compare in my opinion what you should what people could do is compare it to a linear fusion rifle, which are very strong right now. Like everyone, go get your Taipans, go get your Storm Chasers, go get your Cataclysms, go get your Reed's Regrets, and then you have one of every energy type. And that's amazing. And while they are good for like many, many bosses, they're not, they have their drawbacks because they need to hit a critical. If they don't hit a crit, they're useless. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're absolute garbage if you can't land your shot. And most enemies are moving, are small, are, are have tiny heads. You know, it's not it's not as simple. And, and Divinity is great in the, in the sense that it makes your hits crit. And so it's like, that's where Divinity is great. But it also has things like debuffs on top of like lowering the skill lowering the skill floor it on top of that gives you additional debuffs and it's just like it's it it does feel like it's doing a little too many thing little too many th- little too many things either way let's just roll with that <laughs> either way um so on screen everyone is looking at a divinity um ornament it looks like iron man um yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Which is the, 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 I'm assuming that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, we're talking about Iron Man and maybe War Machine a little bit. They should they should make a Divinity War Machine ornament. That would be cool. Okay, so um, I brought this up. So Din- Divinity has three different looks now. It's very fitting. We only have the one ready. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So they have... Um, you know, the regular divinity, they have sky perdition, and then this one, which is Atropos, which we probably talked about it because I know I've talked about it. And I'm sure this podcast is probably saturated with me talking about it, but Atropos is one of the Greek, uh, one of the three fates slash destiny. They're also called the Morai in Greek mythology. You might pronounce it differently. These are the goddesses who decided the fate of every human that lived on Earth. And so Atropos cut and decided when all mortals should die. The other two fates were Clotho and Laxes. Clotho spun the thread of life on a spindle, and Laxes measured its length. So you had, you had, you had a spin, measure, and cut. And those are the three basic things that the fates do when deciding the lifespan and your to the uh, so how does that make any sense well divinity's little lore has um, some tie-ins with the vex flavor text on divinity Calibrate reality, seek inevitability, and embody divinity. And so there's a there's a trio again, and it's the three things that the Vex do to try to take over their idea of what would be a set fate, right? So they mm-hmm. want to calibrate reality, they want to seek inevitability, and they want to embody divinity. What you know about the Vex is that they basically try to mirror themselves after the hive, 
and by following this kind of in uh, like worship this like uh what would you call that when somebody um, copies another person in worship to try to gain the same power that they have? I don't know, but that's basically what they're doing. Uh, and so we had to go through the entire event where we went, you know, we were splicers and we went down into uh, to fight Kuria, Blade, Transform. Well, that's basically what the Vex were doing. They were trying to be like the Hive as much as possible, to gain control over the universe and uh, embody divinity. Mm -hmm. So that ties in with the fates and the destiny, uh, which are the Mirai in Greek mythology, because if you know anything about the Mirai, they they have dominion over all life of all humans. uh, And gods cannot manipulate or control them either and they even fear them because the fates are the end all be all they're three but they're actually one and they're all three split from one so they're it's really weird it's like trying to say they're three entities but they're all the same entity Mm -hmm. right um so the atropos are, are are personified as sisters they were considered to be the daughters of zeus and themis the goddess of divine law so there it is again divinity right Um, They also appear as the offspring of the primordial goddess uh, Anank, which is the Mirai, a.k.a. Fate's destiny, controlled the destiny of every living mortal. And even Zeus was subject to their will and unable to change it. So, Atropos was the main sister who decided how each human would die and held shears in her hand, which she would cut the thread of life with. So if you look at the ornament for divinity, it looks like really big shears. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I don't know if the gold and the red mean anything with that. Maybe it's like blood. I don't know. Maybe it's like... Well, I mean, we've seen the, the, the goldish bronze is a very common Vex color, but we haven't seen very much red associated with the vex um as close as we've gotten were the Aphix invasion i'm not sure if that could exactly. have any potential exactly play yeah here. so that's that's what i was thinking too and also Korea blade transform when you killed that machine at the end of the whatever it was called that we did uh the body that fell to the ground had the same coloring uh because it was you know a vex shell it had it had red yeah it had a red shell that looked similar to like a hivey hiveness and it had like this oh know, oh okay no that's that's the taken red okay never mind yeah yeah so that's um, kind of maybe has something i don't know yeah uh they they love to play with these themes and they love to tie in all kinds of little things uh, within the game to kind of lead your mind in certain areas or just because you know that's what they know, and they just throw it in there because they're giving you little hints to what's about to come. So it, it's really interesting to know that the fates have been a huge um, part of Destiny as a whole. I mean, the whole game is named Destiny, duh, right? So it's the fate. And then there's the the famous quote for Destiny, which is, Guardians make their own fate, right? Um, so it's it's interesting to think you have Titans, Hunters and warlocks. There's again three entities, all deciding to take fate in their own hands. And what we saw even in the newest trailer for the next season, uh, the next uh, ex- um, what do you call it? The next expansion. <laughs> next expansion for Lightfall. Yeah, all three of those, uh, you know, uh, Titan, Warlock, and Hunter seem to be carrying the same themes on. So it's like. How do we how do we pull it these strings you know around us or strands around us and take fate into our own hands as guardians? I have those um um ready on my screen if you want me to display them. Just tell me which one. Yeah, that screen. would be awesome if you want to throw that up there. That that's the whole reason I brought this one up because yeah. it is one I have covered in the past, but I just wanted to kind of bring it and tie it into everything that's going on. So we'll start. Um, with I just that. thought it was we'll hilarious. I just thought it was hilarious that divinity is a point of contention right now for so many in the community. And it has a very interesting lore uh, 
that ties into everything. <laughs> um, so yeah. So uh, what do you have on screen? The Hunter one. Um, well, just read them. Yes, read them. <laughs> yeah, Hunter should be on screen now. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just had to check that really quick because I'm. Yeah. It's been a while since I've used this. I don't. I didn't actually have the images. I just have um, second screen on. So Hunter is called Threadrunner, and we're going to read these in an order uh, that Rhino proposes uh, in conjunction with the Mirai. Uh, so Threadrunner masters of movement, speed, and grace. The city is a Threadrunner's playground as they grasp threads and weave new ones to dart through the air, finding the fastest way between two points. Right. And so and then, I say that for the hunter because if you think about clotho, which is another thing, hunters weave cloaks, weave cloth, they weave sapphire wire. They're all about weaving things and and spinning thread. Uh, I mean, one of the things they do when another hunter is fallen in the field, they don his cloak or her cloak and they pass it along. And, you know, the length of cloaks matter, stuff like that. So it's a very hunterism type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then so next you would have your warlock, which is the architect. Um, architects effortlessly manipulate the weave using only their mind. From the back line, these telekinetic sorcerers can even twist Strand into sentient creatures to do their bidding. Yeah, so now that's very interesting because warlocks, just like we know, are very mental. They're the librarians of the everything. They twist and, and manipulate things. They try to sort out and find out what's going on with all their surroundings. They want to know as much as they can. They're all about knowledge and seeking and twisting that knowledge into tangible realities that they can manipulate, right? That's why they don't hold weapons. They use their hands and their minds to, you know, uh, make the paracausal energies in front of them. And so that fits in very well with the measuring and the manipulation of the weave that the hunter created by the, the sister Lax, Laxus. So if you think about uh, that's the second sister, right? Similar to that. So measure. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is the Titans uh, subclass Tyrant. Untamed and wild, Tyrants tear at Strand to manifest claws they use to sever their targets from the weave. Leaping into harm's way with wild abandon, the line no one crosses is drawn by the Tyrant. And obviously, uh, this one kind of says it straight out. Tyrants yeah. <laughs> tear at strands and manifest claws they use to sever their targets from the weave. Right. So sever, cut, synonym, right? Yeah. So now you've got now you've got the Titan who is embodying what would be this lore card, which is a tropos, the very cutting of that thread of life for the enemy. So they're taking these. Um, abilities of fate or these um, abilities that are Sorry, attributed no. to the Mirai and they're taking them in their own hands, if you will, <laughs> uh, pun intended, and they're using them as uh, paracausal powers to, you know, attack and defend the surroundings of their world. So the guardians are embodying the abilities of what should be only used by the fates or the Mirai. So it's kind of like guardians make their own fate. But yeah, is that more literal than we've all been thinking over all of these years? Maybe. Maybe the the existence of a guardian or any light bearer is basically you are imbued with what should have been only designed for the fates to have. Hmm. Even our enemies are very much using this same paracausal Power because the hive pretty much live by this whole design their whole entire hierarchy is kind of in this dicta of spin measure cut spin measure cut spin measure cut so everything within that hierarchy fits the same form but on the flip side guardians are doing the same exact thing and so now that this new guard dark uh, power darkness power that's never been used before is being attained by guardians we're using that same architect architecture mm -hmm. so that was the most important thing about that whole whole thing and like anon pointed out when he shared that and i read all that that 
that made the most sense because now we are headed towards you know unknown unknown territory we're going to be getting into things that really are just totally ominous we had never done before and yeah up to this point we were pretty much just being shuttled along we're just riding the train well now in the next adventure that we get into we're much we're we're, we're going to be pulling at the levers and the steering wheels we're going to be like moving the machine where we want it to go so anyway uh so so just back to the mirai real quick to just wrap it up in a tiny little bow uh, atropos was the eldest who dealt with the inevitable and unstoppable events of life however her main focus was on death the inevitable fate of all mortal beings uh, zeus poseidon and hades were un unable to be unable to sway the fates Atropos and her sisters were the deciders of fate, while the other gods were merely enforcers. Um, some accounts tell they were the daughters of Erebus and Nyx, which would be nine. And others, myths, claim they were the children of Zeus and Themis, which would be very much the lightning god that we all talk about, but nobody knows. <laughs> so Zeus is in the game, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But Atropos also went by the name of Asia. Uh, both of her Greek names roughly translate to without turn. Um, that's the Roman equivalent of Atropos. It was Morta. Atropos, along with her sisters, also appear, appear in the story of Atalanta, popular submachine gun. Um, and so the other little... Um, Things I wanted to bring up real quick, just to tie it up. Why is Atropos the ornament for divinity? So back to that. <clears throat> There's another ornament, which is called Perdition Flash Sky. Uh, it's a very angelic looking type of um, ornament. It's gold, white, things you would associate with like heaven, I guess. Uh, but the sky is... So this is where it comes together. So when sky and perdition are used together, sky means a dwelling place of perfect happiness for the soul after death. Sky is the antonym for perdition. Uh, perdition is the idea or a belief that warriors felled in battle will be raised to the sky. Right? So perdition would be the place of punishment for the wicked after death. So that would be the opposite. So Sky and Perdition, they're playing with that whole, like, your fate has been decided. Where do you go? You go to heaven or hell? You go to, you know, place of light or darkness, right? Um, divinity, just the sole purpose of the word divinity, is pertaining to a god. Eternal, holy, or otherwise godlike. Obsolete of souls, a.k.a. immortal, which would be like guardians. We don't have souls. We're just immortal. Uh, or we were saved after death, which would be the ghost that resurrected us. So divinity has this really cool meaning that ties into the game as a whole. Uh, when you relate divinity to theology, it's basically the study of religion or religious practices, which is exactly what the Vex are doing. Mm. So that's, that's a, a heavy-handed approach to the game as a whole by using the weapon divinity to kind of describe everything in totality uh, that we've been doing. Um, and so it's right there in front of your face. If you choose to read the lore and look at the weapons, you'll see that this theme has been repeated many times throughout flavor texts, lore entries, grimoire, even things that aren't even in the game specifically. <clears throat> well, there's the lore card. Sorry, it's so long-winded. <laughs> that's what we're here for. I was just looking into um, Perdition, because I know that's been like a thing in Destiny before. Um, it was a pulse rifle from the Crucible uh, called yes! Perdition. It was a pulse rifle. I think that's a pulse rifle. Uh, from Trials of Osiris and, and uh, Rise of Iron. And it's a Lost Sector... <laughs> on Europa and um the fundament shell also just mentions um the fires of perdition 
but not any real um, further association than that, as far as I can tell. I was just skimming it really quick. Yeah. Um, well, that's okay because this is how you find things, you know. Yeah. No. Google exactly. Search. Yeah, that's how I you, do it. I mean, you get that you get that one you get that one thing. You say, "Where does this thread go?" And it, it didn't go. <laughs> it didn't really go anywhere today. It's just yeah. a word that Bungie likes to use because it because of its real world connotations. Um, well, the yeah. the other thing about the Vex is they've used the same um, uh, verbiage or wordage, whatever you want to say, uh, text that the Hive kind of do. They just manipulated it in a different way so that it's more syntax more syntax or more more characteristics more characteristic of what a machine would say if you mm -hmm. were thinking of a of a soulless embodied machine trying to make sense of its reality how would he approach how would he or she approach uh its environment and its reality and so the vets take these words that they are known that they know from the hive and then they attribute them to themselves when they're trying to rewrite the reality around them. Hmm. And so there are things that have come up that are tied to the Vex, which are very interesting, like the word needle, thread, stitch, stitch in time, time being woven, time uh, being a thread. And one of the very first things that I noticed in Destiny, the game, that I immediately understood to be uh, somewhat of what they do, they can you know, throw themselves through the rift of time and, and time travel. But how do they do that? They unzip reality around themselves. So if you look at the hunter cloak from the Vault of Glass raid, it's mm -hmm. very much a zipper that's been unzipped. If you yeah. look at it, there's that. And then there's also the thing that brought all this to my attention from the very first time I noticed it was in D1, hunters got a cloak, which was called a tropos cloak. And that was what led me onto this rabbit hole in the very beginning of everything. And that Interesting. And which made me understand the game more than I ever would have, you know, not reading that. But yeah, so it, it's just like these sets of three. You wonder why a three is a magic number. You wonder why they keep doing these things like three is a fire team, six is a raid, nine is, you know, the nine. <laughs> yeah. It's very much it's very much something uh, that they they carry throughout the game thematically, and it's intentional. So, um, yeah. So then, just to kind of come back into season of the plunder. Yep. Um, you know we've had we've had four weeks now, and we haven't. We've been getting like little pieces. We haven't really had the big re revelation yet, and it feels like the revelation is going to be coming very soon. Um, I have a sneaky su su uh, suspicion that it's going to. Well, it's going to fold right into the next thing, but I have a sneaky suspension suspicion it's going to give us a window or a kind of like a sight glass into the road that's going to be leading to the next expansion so i think mm -hmm. if we all pay attention to the end of the season we'll probably see a glimpse of what's going to be coming up ahead because that's yeah. how they like to do it they did it with uh just every single season they did it with season of the hunt you know mm -hmm. when they talked about uh the lichen and you know this the the growths and and yeah uh, zebu or wrath and all that stuff so they love to do yeah. that so so this season um you know it's fun pirate wash, but like kind of beneath that, it's talking about how the Elixni used to actually be crews like this. And so when we were introduced to the Elixni, it, they were told like they were crews and everything and they had the kill and et cetera, et cetera. But now it almost feels like they're kind of going back on that. And they're saying like, Yes, there was the House of Wolves, but the House of Wolves was made of individual crews who did not care for each other. And, you know, they maybe they would fight, maybe they wouldn't fight, maybe they would exclusively target other houses, other crews. Um but I think I think the line was um Catch's Kin was uh yeah, in one yeah, of the lore books. Good, yeah. 
and basically if you're not a member of that catch then they then you don't matter anything to these crews and that might have been as they were traveling and then they found earth they got to the system and they they kind of like consolidated they 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 regrouped under a house banner and that became a little less true um and so we have this like under underlying dark history of the elixir that mithrax partook in and and he talks about how he and also spider used to be part of the house of wolves and that's that's really exciting to learn about mithrax and he's trying to keep his history not even his anti-human war crimes or is it, yeah um yeah <laughs> i don't think anti-human yeah. war crimes sounds like a double negative his war crimes against humanity um he's kind of faced those with saint they've faced each other's together and now he's got this this history that he's kept hidden from ido his his adoptive daughter um that he's trying to keep hidden from her and it's like little by little he's he's failing to and it's all beginning more and more it's becoming apparent that it's revolving around the items that we are collecting each week from the uh, pirate lords, I think they're called. Um, yep. Which, that's probably one of my favorite things about this season, and it sucks that you only do it once a week. They Bungie has, <laughs> Bungie has like remastered old Lost Sectors that you never, maybe you've run a few times, and now they're different, and now they have this, like, oh, it's a pirate den, and you're going in to steal the treasure from this this pirate lord, and it's, it's, it's fucking awesome that it, like, that's what's happening. And you do them once a week, and, like, I hope, that's fine for the story and for experiencing the story, but I hope post-season, like, for the, for the rest of the year of this year, I hope that there's just a pirate den playlist and we can just farm. That would be this. so cool. Cause I, I think they're fun. Um, and so we're going in there and we're, we're collecting these reliquaries from them. And apparently that's not the only location that they are. It's not only Elixir that have them. It's like drifters had some, he immediately recognized them. He's like name dropping that they contain darkness energy in some fashion. He's he's spoken about. I, I'm not sure if it was him or if it was Ido. Someone spoke that there's like bones and flesh and balls of hair inside. And so, the definition of a reliquary is um, a container for holy relics. And so you take that in mind and you think about what's in them, and it's like like body parts and hair and it is it sounds sounds sort of sounds sort of like witchcrafty where um you know obvious a ball of hair yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's only like a witchcrafty thing and maybe maybe this kind of goes back to the hive but that doesn't sound exactly right and it when you think about them the reliquaries when you think about putting a body part in a jar and that being important you, uh, an obvious uh, connection to make is to bring it to the Egyptians who would t take organs out of someone they were mummifying and they would yep. put them in certain jars yeah. and I'm not sure if they were also called reliquaries in the Egyptian uh, culture oh Do you my know? gosh I can't remember the name right now uh, but uh, they're effectively yeah, the yeah, same yeah. thing and if you're talking about Egyptians, you're you're another logical leap is could this have to do with the pyramids and the, then Drifter saying that they they do exude dark energies and stuff like that. And so, well, that's the pyramid. So you have this kind of like logic line tracing them back to the pyramids, and it's just like we have what appears to be after season of the haunted an abandoned pyramid ship in in the moon and now we have mithrax kind of telling us what it sounds like he's saying is that in our system and maybe like the immediate outer system of our solar system um are all these reliquaries and the elixir have fought over them and drifter has some of them and drifter's like a collector of dark objects 
And it almost sounds like whomever it was that abandoned, in my opinion, this is just like kind of my theory, uh, whoever abandoned or was killed that used to own this uh, lunar, the, the lunar pyramid, it almost sounds like they created the reliquaries for some purpose. I, it's hard to say. There's not enough information right now. What are what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's interesting, you know, like the bones and hair and what was mm-hmm. it, like a foot or something or a foot or a hand or a finger or something. There was, some, there was a mention of a finger. Yeah. So if there are these body parts and so it very much seems like these body parts could have to do maybe one individual uh, and they were spread around in these reliquaries, uh, separated from one from from each other for a reason. I don't know. You know, it almost that's, seems that's the, you know, that's a, that's a potential I didn't even think of. What if that's what it is? Holy shit! Are we rebuilding a disciple? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is how does this how does this play into the oh ultimate God. goal? Like, are we taking these body parts and then? Remember when Crota was showing up on Earth and it was like, oh, it's the fist of Crota, it's the hand of Crota, it's the foot of Crota, it's, you know, Crota. Dude. Ding dong. I don't know. But then, like, so now are we kind of doing, are we playing into the darkness, you know, hand that's being dealt towards us? And uh, we're I want to be careful talking about certain stuff because I've heard yeah, there are yeah. leaks around and I don't want to accidentally talk about something that was a leak that i didn't realize was a leak because it's just like that could have happened already did it just did yeah. i did, was it just over my head and i missed it or is that a leak because i heard that aramis was woken up by the witness for the purpose of collecting the reliquaries oh good lord that is freaky i did not hear that okay maybe that was a leak and i'm sorry if it was <laughs> shit Oops, <laughs> but like that's that's what you would hear in like week one, isn't it? Like that's because week one, it's just like Aramis is alive again. And it's like, well, why is she alive again? Like, what the hell? That's kind of random. And then people were saying, like, immediately, people were saying the witness woke her up to collect the reliquaries. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. I must have not been paying attention. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we know that the hive. Why was why was Eris alive? to just break free but she had an ahamkara right so we know that the power of the ahamkara is very ominous wait 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 wait, 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 wait. what do you mean aramis had aramis not aramis not aramis eris oh okay okay yeah so like that that could be all wrapped up and that could be the ultimate play that we're we're leading to towards is uh what is up with the ahamkara i mean i would love to find out that just what the heck? I mean, for all we know, the Ahankar could be every single weapon and armor that we've been using throughout the entire game. No. I mean, it could be. It could be the end all be all of Guardians as a whole. I think we should I think game. we should get off the Ahankar because I really do think that you were onto something with No the, no no. I, I only I only brought it up I only brought it up because Eris's back door to getting out of the hive was rooted around that one specific Ahamkara, Ahamkara piece. Making but the making high wish on an Ahamkara bone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that she circumvented her issue of being trapped down in the uh, pit was to use that to get out. But like you said, what if that was the witnesses or the hive by proxy of witness whole intention or whole motivation was to allow her to escape? I, I don't think that I don't see that as anyway. a possibility in, in, in my opinion. Maybe maybe Eris is Zebra Rat. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I, but I, you know, I I was thinking it kind of odd to be collecting these things. But I think the most it is. answer is that we're kind of we're we're due an we're due another fuck up. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we are. We are. It, you know it. Um, it's like all of these games. There's always like the 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 button pusher. Stop pushing the button. You're on, you're you're opening Pandora's box again. The protagonist of all these video games. It's like, why did you push that button? You screwed up. It's <laughs> everything so, was it, good. It's so it's so crazy to me because it's it's so obvious now that you've like put me on this thought because 
everyone's like, oh, yeah, I've been collecting these. Like, everyone who's known about them, they're like, oh, yeah, I've been collecting these. They hold great power. And it's like, what power do they hold? And it's like, well, I mean, they do. And it's like, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? What power what, 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 have these? What is it? And it's like, what's is their power the compulsion to, to get the rest? Like, is their power, like, a psychic, like, energy that's like, hey, there's more of me out there. Why don't you go get them all and just kind of put them next to each other? Yeah, we're we're going to resurrect a wit. We're going to resurrect a disciple of the witness. And that's going to be the dungeon for next season. How awesome I mean, that would that be, be really cool. That would be pretty cool if we made our own enemy just by collecting pieces of that enemy. Just similar to, like, what was happening with Crota, but failed because we stopped him from... I mean, we went to the heart of the Crota. We went to all, you know, all that yeah. stuff to keep him from being phys- a physical manifestation in our reality. He was locked in his tr- throne world to where we could only go and defeat him there. So and would, in. Yeah, I would, I would love to see that happen. Like, literally, I would love to see that happen where we, we are the reason, because we were so efficient, we are the reason that a disciple of the witness has been resurrected. Um, because... I've, I say this all the time. We fucked up in the Forsaken campaign. We should have listened to Zawala. We should not have pursued Prince Aldrin. Like, so much bad has happened because of our insistence to just continue doing whatever the fuck we wanted. <laughs> and as much as I say that, as much as I say that with evidence, people are still like, no, no, we didn't fuck up. What are you talking about? We we were completely in the right there. And it's like, no, we fucked up. We are the we were the we were the idiots in that case. And and no one's like willing to accept it. So the only way it's gonna be accepted is if we literally collected the body parts of an enemy and then allowed them to be resurrected. Like no one would be like, no, no, no. It was all right that we did that. <laughs> like we fucked up. <laughs> we're gonna fuck up again. I can't wait. I can't wait for the end of this season now. Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be great if the reason we or the reason we fucked up is the whole reason why we end up on um Numuna, what is it called? Neo Muna, yeah, and uh, and somehow our our fuck up leads them to being uh, under distress because of our fuck up, and now we're like, oh shit, we need to go clean up our mess. Man, <laughs> anyway, I, I wonder, I wonder how many. I mean, I'm sure you can kind of just like measure it out, but I wonder how many reliquaries there are going to be, because if that is like the goal of the season. This could be the type of thing where, you know, you have this content loop of just like doing it again and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again. And And they they have kind of really slow burned this for first four weeks of like nothing revolutionary happened every week. You know, it was like very little, very little, very little. It was more about like showing the tension between spider and mithrax and mithrax and ido and like ido <clears throat> learning to to do do things against mithrax's wishes like this week she she clearly hacked spider's vending machine somehow yeah to give us a better a better item than the the crap he's been giving us and it's just like, you know, she's, she's, you know, in her rebellious teenage years, even though she's like a hundred or something. Um, and I mean, she's like, she's like, she's not young in relative to human years. I did the math on this. I, I would have to do it again. Wow. How? No, I was just saying, wow. Oh. So like. Yeah, she's, uh, I, I think I think she's like minimum sixty. Hmm. God, How, interesting thought. Jeez. Yeah. Either way, um, and that's that's relative to human, relative to Elixni, Mithrax is like at least a century, a few centuries old. So it probably means nothing. Hmm. They they live fucking forever. Um, <laughs> I, I I lost my train of thought there. The 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 revelations of the each week have been more personal and less about the big bad that is coming, 
And because of that, they can kind of keep yeah. doing this. They can they can keep developing their personal relationships. And it's kind of like it's kind of like a magic trick, right? We're being distracted right. by yes by the that's exactly what, that's exactly what's happening. So like one of the one of the biggest things to do um, is to give you like the the soap opera mm -hmm. and, and and you're you're watching the soap opera and you're wrapped up in you're like well, what's going to happen next week or or do these people hate each other or oh so and so did something to so and so and now what's going to happen next week well why you're why you're just wrapped up in that all that drama. Uh, there's stuff happening in the background you haven't been noticing and people walking by integral to the next thing that's about to happen. And then you see, Oh my God, they were there the whole time. This is what happened. And boom, it's much more impactful that way. So from just a, a writer standpoint and from a creator standpoint, architect, whatever, it's much more fun to get people to be wrapped up and distracted by all the little minutia. Like, this is a really good story right now that's happening, which has to do with Ido, because uh, Daddy is not, you know, perfect, you know, and that that's a thing that happens with families all around the world is parents are not infallible. And for years, when you're a little child, you think your parents are perfect, right? For a while, anyway, until they do the thing that you go, oh, my God, you're just you're just as dumb as we are, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you don't know everything or that one time when mom or dad said something you're like that's not right <laughs> you know you finally have this revelation of oh maybe my parents aren't perfect or perfect you know you, you find that out and so Ido is kind of experiencing the thing where she's starting to learn about the history of, of daddy and he's got a sordid past that's starting to come to light and so what is that going to do to Ido mm -hmm. I mean her, uh, yeah what is that going to do to her you know, how is that going to affect everything? You know, I mean, it, it, is, it, is it going to be like what you said, a, a teenage temper tantrum that's going to just, you know, blow up? Or is it going to be like, a, um, you know, just a wall yeah. of morality that comes crashing down? I mean, there's a lot of sordid people that are, are playing together right now because you got pirates, you got the drifter, you got a lot of mm -hmm. like seedy stuff happening. I've had uh, I've I've seen conversations. I, I can't remember who was saying it. Thing that Ida was gonna like, kind of go off and kind of like rebel against everything. I don't really see that because, like, she's being a little mischievous right now, doing the thing with like making Spider give us a better engram. And yeah. you know, this week she had a confrontation with Mithrax where she was like, "There's nothing gained in ignorance," and she's like. She's being very mature about it. And just immediately from her character, I did not get like, even though she's in like rebellious teen years, it's such a much more mature level than what actual rebellious teen years is supposed to be yeah, that it's yeah. like, yeah, maybe, maybe she's doing what her dad doesn't want her to, but she's not, she's not doing it in a stupid way. You know, she's, she's being very smart about it. Well, it's it's been interesting so far, and you know, it, I think there's you know there's more meat on that bone. I mean, we're obviously talking about stuff we don't even we haven't even seen yet, but um, there's going to be I'm sure there's going to be a climax. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so this front and center, uh, you know, drama that we're all distracted by is just the one part of it. But uh, yeah, I hope, I hope we get to see that little you know that little glimpse. Of what's going to happen? Yeah, I, I I had not even slightly considered um, the potential that that we were going to reconstruct a disciple. But well, I, that idea I, I, I don't. I didn't read any spoilers. I don't know anything. So if I say I anything, I, 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 I didn't read spoiler, anything intentionally. I yeah, I just that was my own my own headspace. Just yeah. reading the lore and and, and yeah. having those. Things. I'm just like, no, because like, like really. Why else for, would there be a ding finger or foot or whatever it was in there? I mean, like, what else is that yeah. for? I, I thought it was I like like really just to kind of like go back to where I was, just so we can like kind of because maybe we're not. Maybe maybe I was more in the ballpark than uh, reconstructing. Uh, yeah, I I was really thinking it was going to be more of a like darkness ritual, and these are like artifacts of dark power and and we were kind of trying to get into this kind of like witchcraft of mm. 
Yeah. Like a new, because I, I, I really think that the, I'm trying to think beyond Lightfall. I'm trying to think beyond Final Shape. What do we do next? And if you can start implementing things like Neomuna is going to be implementing like nanobots and things like that. And it's like, okay, well, what if there was nanobots and what if there was witchcraft? And it's like, what if there are things that are not light and dark? And sure. it's like, or maybe maybe they started out as light nanobots maybe they started out as dark witchcraft and they've evolved beyond the limits of the natural light and dark uh structure and that's kind of where i was thinking it could go um one big question is uh this week we had a conversation with mithrax and saint uh on the um the radio Lately, it's been Drifter and people, Drifter and Eris and etc. Uh, but this week, it was Mithrax and Saint. And at the end of the conversation, Mithrax asked how Osiris was. And based on the uh, banner images, the promotional materials for Lightfall, we know that Osiris is going to be back. What we don't know is how he's coming back. And I don't think it's going to happen this season. I think it's going to happen next season. But what kicks this season into next season that allows... Like, does Osiris just wake up? I feel like it's... You can't have him just wake up, right? At this point. You can't just... And he's awake, and he's fine, and he can walk again, and he doesn't need physical therapy, and, you know, absolutely everything's in the clear. It's been so long that an event needs to trigger his um, his awakening, But yeah, um, there's a lot, there's a lot coming in the future. I'm really excited about a lot of these things. Um, we had a late start to the show, but I think we're kind of coming on our time. Yeah, we're approaching it. Yeah, we're, we're at, at it. it. Oh, we're at it. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's what I thought. Um, Oops. So, um, our next show, we're gonna be we're gonna be taking a little break because I am going on my honeymoon, and I will not be Woo-hoo! available for uh the next for a few weeks so um our next show will be on october 16th and by that point maybe can you imagine if they like what can they do oh they could do anything it's it's too hard it's too hard to think i'm trying to think like what they could do like what if what if like we had a pirate lord who had like 10 reliquaries and they were like <laughs> this is a this is an entire leg <laughs> this is like a like an entire body part and it's like why does he have an entire leg that's kind of weird and like you know just something like that i just can't wait to sit by the 16th there's gonna be so much more to to talk about and we we've got lore books to get into it's, it's gonna be a good time all right well we'll, we'll see you then We will see you guys then. Have a good one. Enjoy uh, Destiny, everyone. Bye. Bye.